In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom laser cut acrylic rulers with your own logo on it uh, using Inkscape software and a laser cutter. I'm Edward Chuka, and in this Inkscape tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut your own custom ruler with your own logo on it. So we're going to start from scratch here. So I'm going to click File and New. The first thing I'm going to need here is a Bezier line. You can press B or click on the icon. And I'm going to start going from right to left. So uh, I'm going to hold down the Control button, which locks it in horizontally, and click there, and press Spacebar next to give me some control here. Now, uh, I'm going to control something called Fill and Stroke, and if you don't have that open, it's under Object, Fill and Stroke, and it'll pop up here. Okay, so right now this line does not have fill, but it does have stroke, and the stroke style gives it a certain amount of width, which I actually don't want, because it kind of messes with uh, some of my measurements, and I want this ruler to be perfect. So I'm going to tell this width to be actually hairline, which gives it zero width, but I can still see it, which is handy. So now we see H is zero at the top. Now I'm gonna make it 100 millimeters long, which gives me a 10 centimeter measurement. Uh, you can make it longer or shorter, but that seems like a good number to me. So at this point, I am going to uh, do something called a path effect. So on this line, uh, there, are, there are many path effects. If I actually close that off, there's all these different things you can do with objects in Inkscape. In this case, I want to do something called ruler, so we're going to click on that. And it went back to my other file for some reason, but that's okay. Here's the one I'm working on. Here we go. We've got a 10 centimeter line, but it's, it's divided up into pixels, which I don't want to work with. I want to work in millimeters. And right now, the mark distance is every 20 millimeters. I want, actually, every millimeter. The major length is kind of how long the lines are. I think four is plenty for that one. And the minor length is the smallest ones. And I think two millimeters is great for that. And the steps is actually good the way it is. Every five millimeters, I do want a longer line. So that works very good. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. But I also want some marks at the 10 uh, millimeter mark. So I'm going to go Control D on my keyboard, which duplicates the whole thing. So now I've actually got two copies right on top of each other and I can just manipulate the one that I have. I still want mark distance one. Major length this time is going to be six, uh, but it's going to be uh, zero for the minor length. So that's every millimeter. I don't need to overwrite the ones that are already there. This time I want to have 10 of the major steps. And now we can have a longer line every centimeter along the way. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's good right there. And next I'm going to create the rectangle for the whole ruler. Um, you can make it exactly 10 if you want, but it'll kind of cut off your numbers and stuff like that. So I'm going to create a ruler uh, that is going to be 120 millimeters long, so 12 centimeters, and then maybe 30 millimeters wide. That seems like a good width for a ruler, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to get out of that and just uh, hit the select tool. Now, um, I want to uh, align things. I've actually got two rulers together here, so you can see they're both you know, selected, and I'm holding shift and I'll select my box, and then I'm going to go to the align and distribute tool if you need to open it it's down here under object line and distribute and i'm going to go relative to last selected which is the, the bigger ruler i want the centers to be aligned and then i want the little markings on the top perfect i'm happy with that next i'm going to want some numbers on here so i'm going to get the text tool and just plop down a zero now, after some experimenting, I tend to like the bold version of the letters, and I think 20 is overkill, so maybe 10 should be plenty for that one. Okay, I've got my zero ready to go. I just want to get it in position. Zoom in on that, try to center it by the eye pretty good. 
And now I'm going to create some clones of it, clone and create tile clones, and that should pop up the toolbar on the right here. And after some experimentation, um, this program uses percentages to shift it left and right, and uh, it's based on the width of the O itself and everything. So after some experimenting, I figured out that 371.8 seems to work for the distancing. And so if I create 11 of those, I've got 11 clones. Awesome. Now I can't really edit that as it is, uh, so I'm going to select it and then go select, same, fill, and stroke. And that selects all of them because they're clones right now. And I can go clone and unlink it to the original. Okay. So I'm going to hit escape a couple times. And let's see if I can get in and edit one of them. Great. Okay. Excellent. Uh, my 10 is a little off now, so I'm going to bring that back. If I want to adjust any of them, I could, but I think they're doing pretty good. Maybe the four could go a little over. The rest of them look good to me. Now, uh, as always with clones, it creates one right on top of the zero, so there's actually two of them there. So I deleted one. If I delete both, they're gone. So I'm going to bring it back with Control Z. And there's all of my 10 numbers. I'm happy with that. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to select them all again using the select same fill and stroke. And I'm going to uh, group them. And then I'm going to turn them into a bitmap version, just my preference. They would laser cut as an outline as they were. But if I go down and I, I need to check my preferences because... The default for import images is only 96 dpi right here. So check yours. You might want to up it. I upped it to 600 dpi so I get more dots per square inch. And now I can make a bitmap copy of those numbers. And so they're right on top of it. So you can't see the difference. But I want to uh, turn off the group. So if I go to object and objects again, it should show me that now I do have a group of letters here that I can turn the eyelid closed and that it's, it's hidden. So what I'm only looking at is actually a bitmap copy, which uh, the laser cutter will engrave, which I like better. All right, so we have a ruler um, pretty much ready to go. I want to change the outline of my, my rectangle here to be red. So... My laser cutter knows the difference of cutting that out. And then you can add your logo, and uh, if you want, I'll show you how to add some holes to put it in a binder, which is kind of nice. Uh, for now, I'm going to grab my logo. It could be anything that you want, but I've got my logo already ready to go. So if I paste that in here, I can now center that. Uh, I'll move it up a little bit. And now I do want to center it uh, left and right with the ruler itself. So if I go up to align and distribute relative to the last selected, center them and that moves it a little bit into place. Awesome. Now you could probably go ahead and cut that, but I'm going to show you how to make the holes where you could put it into a binder safely. Make a Bezier line. Start here and hold the control button to lock it into the horizontal position. And I'm going to press spacebar. And once again, I'm going to go into the fill and stroke, the stroke style. I'm just going to make it a hairline. And now I'm going to set the width. A standard binder has the, not that one, the width. Oh, it was really close. It's 108 millimeters between the two, any two uh, rings of a three ring binder. That's the standard distance. And I can change the location downwards a little bit. I don't want to be too far from the edge. Let's see how that looks. I can maybe move it later. So that's just uh, setting up my location for my holes. And I do want to align it with the ruler itself. So we'll go back to align and distribute. Make sure it's centered. Okay, we'll move a little bit. Now I'm going to create circles. And if I hold Control and Shift, it's going to, and then I click and hold, it's going to create a circle with uh, the same dimensions, so they're even. I'm finding that uh, three millimeter radius seems like a good amount for a binder. The 
rings on a binder. So I like that one. Press escape a couple times and, and let's repeat. Uh, holding control and shift, get a circle going and then adjust the radius to three and three and it'll be centered on that line. So at least they're the right distance apart. Having a look at how close it is to the bottom, I kind of don't like that anymore. I'm going to press escape a couple times and then I'm going to select the line, the circles, and then um, I can just start moving my arrow up and it will keep it centered. Maybe there is good. And now I don't want this line to do anything with the laser cutter. So if I go back into the objects menu, I can tell that one to be invisible and that won't do anything in my laser cutter. All right, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna go file, save as, and I've been practicing a little bit. So we're on to ruler number six now. And that should be ready to open into laser box uh, for our make block laser box. So the laser box software is already open, ready to go. And I go import. We're going to take ruler number six and open it. And that looks perfect. So anything that is red will be cut out. It's very low speed, but high power. That'll cut it right out. Anything that is black, it will make vector lines for my markings. And then anything that's orange, it will do an engraving, more like a stippling. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this on the laser cutter and I'll show you the result. Okay, here is what I've got from the laser cutter. There is my ruler. It's still covered in the blue protective coating. So I'm going to peel it off. Here's the final results with the adhesive peeled off. The numbers and the logo came out beautifully. And for a moment of truth, let's see if the holes were placed properly and bingo we have our ruler safe and sound in our binder awesome